this morning. Uh, glory be to God. Let's um, let's welcome our bishop. Uh, you know, he's done a wonderful uh, a job this morning to welcome us all. But uh, I don't think anyone has welcomed him. We want to welcome you, Bishop. Hallelujah. We thank you for. Uh, you know, for your love and ev everything that you've done for us this morning. I want to also welcome uh, those, you know, joining us this morning from different parts of, of the world and those joining us for the very, very first time. Uh, you've done a wonderful thing to tune in to the word of God this morning. Hallelujah. So let's just pray. Father, we thank you for this uh, time, this moment that you've given us to just uh, uh, dive into your word. Holy Spirit, we ask that you just take over. I'm just a vessel. Uh, speak through me, Holy Spirit, and just touch someone. Just heal someone this morning. Just uh, encourage someone this morning. Elevate someone this morning through your word. Only uh, you can do that, oh God. Uh, these scriptures without you, these words without you are meaningless. We need you to do only what you can do, and that is to touch the hearts of men. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Um, once again, I want to welcome especially our mom, all the way from uh, London, Mom, we love you with the love of God. Uh, may the good Lord continue just to increase you and strengthen you as we continue to push this vision of reaching out into the world through God's limitless love. Hallelujah. I don't want to waste any much time this morning. Let's dive into the word of God and Get your Bibles, you know, get your pens, get your notebooks ready, jot down some notes, hallelujah. It's important that you use your own Bible, uh, hallelujah, so that you don't think that Elder is making up things. It has to correspond with what's in your own Bible, hallelujah. So let us go straight to the book of Judges, Judges chapter 14. Judges chapter 14, and I've entitled the message for this morning, Out of the Eater, Something to Eat, Hallelujah, Out of the Eater, Something to Eat. Let's pick it up from verse 5, let's read from verse 5 uh, up to verse 14 this morning, hallelujah. Judges 14, verse 5. So Samson went down to Timnah with his father and mother <coughs> and came to the vineyards of Timnah. Suddenly, a, a young lion came roaring against him, and the spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him, and he tore the lion apart as one would have torn apart a young god, though he had nothing in his hand, but he did not tell his father or his mother what he had done. Verse seven, then he went down and talked uh, with the woman and she pleased Samson well. After some time, when he returned to get her, he turned aside to see the carcass of the lion and behold, a swarm of bees and honey were in the carcass of the lion. He took some of it in his hands and went along eating. When he came to his father and mother, he gave some to them and they also ate. But he did not tell them what he, that he had taken the honey out of the carcass of the lion. He did not tell them that he had taken their honey from the carcass of the lion. Hallelujah. Out of the eater, 
something to eat. Mm -hmm. Verse 10. So his father went down to the woman, and Samson gave a feast there. For young men uh, used to do so. And it happened when they saw him that they brought 30 companions to be with him. Verse 12. Then Samson said to them, let me pose a riddle to you. If you can correctly solve and explain it to me within the seven days of the feast, then I will give you 30 linen garments and 30 changes of clothing. But if you cannot explain it to me, then you shall give me 30 linen garments and 30 changes of clothing. And then he said to them, to him, and they said to him, pause your riddle that we may hear it. So he said to them, out of the eater came something to eat, and out of the strong came something sweet. Out of the eater came something to eat, and out of the strong something sweet. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. We want to look at this redo uh, this morning, ladies and gentlemen, but in a in a in a different context hallelujah the lion here that is being uh, mentioned by samson it, it can uh, uh, be any situation or any circumstance or any any difficult uh, encounter that you can face in your life hallelujah anything ladies and gentlemen that is a a, a, a potential to cause grief, a potential to cause pain, a, a, a potential to cause harm, a, a potential to cause discouragement can be likened to a lion in your life. Hallelujah. And I want you to know that you don't even have to go looking for these lions. The Bible says, says in, in verse 5, as they were minding their own business, as they were going about this their journey to, to a land of Timna, uh, guess what? There was a lion that was licking about in, in the bushes. There was a lion that was, that was hiding behind the bushes. And the word of God said, suddenly it just appeared. <laughs> Even yourself, as you are going through this journey called life, you are busy minding your own business. Guess what? There are some lions that are lurking about. Lion, lions of discouragement, lions of sickness and disease, lions of pain. We had uh, Sister Chantel leading us in a prayer there uh, 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 and mentioning about Paul. You know, there are even thorns that are lurking behind, that are waiting to jump into your journey. Hallelujah. Anything that is designed to cause harm or to cause pain or to cause discomfort can be likened to a lion. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. And guess what? When we encounter these lions, when we encounter these situations, when we encounter these circumstances, the enemy is quick to pounce on that. Hallelujah. The enemy is quick, ladies and gentlemen, to pounce on that and to, to capitalize on those situations. And he start whispering to you, where is your God? How can a child of God uh, go through such an experience? How can a child of God go through such pain? God has left you. God has forsaken you. And all of a sudden, we start feeling a, a, a feelings of being a, a abandoned. We start, feel, we start encountering feelings of being an, a, a unloved. We start in, encountering uh, feelings of isolation. Hallelujah. Thinking that God has forsaken us and God has left us. You know, he starts whispering in our ears. If you are really a child of God, why are you going through this? Why have you encountered this? Why are your children like this? Why has your business shut down? Why has God taken your wife? Why has God taken your spouse? 
God is punishing you. These are things that he begins to whisper in our, in our ears, ladies and gentlemen. But I want to encourage someone this morning, hallelujah, and let you know that out of the eater, out of any situation that is designed to cause you harm, God can bring something good out of it. <laughs> oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Let me, let me say that again. A situation that can appear or seem to be bad, a situation that can seem to be ugly, God can bring something good out of that situation, out of the eater, that which was meant to eat you, that which was meant to devour you, something sweet is going to come out of that. Oh, hallelujah. I want you to know that it is only God who can bring good out of a bad experience. It is only God who can bring good out of a bad encounter. It is only God who can bring good out of a difficult situation. The enemy is quick to pounce. Hallelujah. And magnify on those sorrows. <laughs> And he starts whispering in your ears. God has forsaken you. God is punishing you. Why are you going through this? Why is your ministry going through this experience? God is no longer with you. <laughs> but I want you to know the word of God says, what can separate us from the love of God? Is it trials? Is it hardship? Is it pain? Is it even death? None of these can separate you from the love of God. So child of God, you might be going through a lion experience. Uh, I want to encourage you, hang on. You might be going through a lion experience. Hallelujah. And the enemy is throwing uh, feelings of shame, feelings of guilt. Uh, feelings of betrayal, feelings of, you know, you, you start to feel condemned, you start to feel unloved, you start to feel uh, 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 unacceptable. I want you to know <laughs> that God is not forsaken you. God wants you to look at these experiences. God wants you to look at these encounters. It's, listen, as painful as they are, Ah, as painful as they are, as hard as they are, as difficult as they are, listen, as shameful as they are, <laughs> God wants you to thrive. Tell your neighbor, he wants you to thrive. He wants you to thrive out of those encounters. Hallelujah. He doesn't want you to become bitter but he wants you to become better. Let me say that again. <laughs> he doesn't want you to become bitter because of that situation. Ah, he wants you to become better. Why? Because out of the eater, something to eat. Not only to eat, but something sweet. <laughs> ah, tell your neighbor something sweet. God is busy cooking up something sweet for you. Mm. You might be having pain in your body. Hallelujah. You might be looking after your spouse who's not feeling well. He or she may be on a deathbed. And you ask, you are, you, are one, you are saying to me, Elder, how can something good come out of this? Uh, my, my child has been arrested. What good can come out of that? My, 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 my husband has just passed away. What good can come out of that? My house has just been repossessed. What good can come out of that? I've just lost my job due, due to this pandemic. What good can come out of that? Yeah. God is busy cooking up something sweet for you. Because the word of God is telling us this morning, out of the eater, Something sweet is going to come out. Oh, hallelujah. Something sweet is going to come out. Glory be to God. Let's quickly go to the book of John chapter 16. John chapter 16. 
Oh, hallelujah. Listen, when you, when this lion jumps out of the bushes, as the Bible has mentioned in verse 5, as they were minding their own business, lion just suddenly just popped in. <laughs> unexpectedly. I said unexpectedly. You're busy doing the work of the Lord, loving the Lord, reaching out in the community. All of a sudden, doctor's letter come in, you've got cancer. Doctor's letter come in, you've got this. The, the bailiff's letter comes through the door. We are repossessing your car. <laughs> and you, you just wonder, God, what have I done to deserve this? Look what John 16 says. Look what John 16 says. Let's read uh, verse 33. John 16, verse 33. I have told you all this so that you may have peace in me. Here on earth, you will have many trials and sorrows. Here where? In Mars. Work with me, work with me. Where? On this earth. So, <laughs> unless you are living in another planet, <laughs> God never promised a, 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 a garden full of roses. The word of God is saying, as long as you are on this earth, you are going to encounter tribulation. You are going to encounter trying times. You are going to encounter... A, 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 a upsetting situation. You are going to encounter trouble. You are going to encounter the, a, 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 a moments of distress. You are going to encounter disappointments. You are going to encounter suffering. Is that in your Bible? That's why I said you need your own Bible so that you, you know, you read and you be underlining as well. Yeah. So that you don't think elders making up things. Hallelujah, hallelujah. It says what? Work with me. As long as you are in this world, you are going to face what? Let's go, mommy. You're going to face? You're going to face trials. Uh-huh. And sorrows. Mm -hmm. But take heart. Ah. Come on, tell your neighbor. Hey, though you are encountering this lion, though you are encountering this challenging time, take heart. Be encouraged. Take heart means don't let go the hem of his garment. No matter how painful it is, don't let go Jesus. No matter how uh, hard it might seem, no matter how shameful it might appear, don't let go holding on to the hem of his garment. Hallelujah. So listen, God is not denying that we are going to face challenging times. God is not denying the fact that there are lions that are lurking about in the bushes. But what he is promising us is that take heart. Uh, continue, continue. There's, there's a word that I want there. Um, but take heart. Because I have overcome. Ah, so what is it is assuring us is that we are going to overcome those situations. Oh, hallelujah. So God is not denying that we are going to encounter trouble. We are going to encounter sickness. We are going to encounter pain, pain in, in, in this journey. But what he is promising us is that we are going to overcome as long as we don't lose heart. As long as, long as we continue holding on. Hallelujah. So when you are encountering these lions, when you are encountering these situations, the enemy wants you to focus on the negative experience of it. Hallelujah. But God wants you to, to, to Concentrate on the positive experience of that painful encounter. Let me say that again. <laughs> the enemy will want you to focus on the negative experience of that encounter. 
But God is encouraging you this morning that you, you, you focus on the positive experiences of that encounter. Be it death, be it sickness, be it loss of a job. He doesn't want you to be bitter because you have lost your spouse. He doesn't want you to be bitter because you have lost your job. He doesn't want you to be bitter because your house has been repossessed, but he wants you to be better. He wants you to come out victorious out of that seemingly bad situation. Ah. Only God can do that. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Only God can do that. Hallelujah. So he doesn't want you to focus on the immediate pain. He doesn't want you to focus on the immediate sorrow. He doesn't want you to focus on the immediate shame, but he wants you to focus on the, he wants you to, to have a, 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 a bigger picture. He wants you to have an understanding of, of the whole trial, of the whole situation. He wants you to look at it uh, uh, in, a, in a different perspective. Oh, hallelujah. I want you to know that greater things are being accomplished. Even though you're going through pain, you might be listening to me and you are lying down on your sick bed and you are wondering <laughs> what good is going to come out of this. <laughs> I want you to know, child of God, that God is there with you. I want you to know that God has not left you because many times this is what happens when we encounter those lions because of pain because of what we are going, because of the emotions that we are going through, we think that God has isolated us. Hallelujah. I want to encourage you this morning through the word of God, that God has not forsaken you. God has not left you. Hallelujah. God never promised a garden full of roses. He said in his word, you are going to encounter trials. You are going to encounter difficult times. But listen to this. Psalms 34. Hallelujah. This is what he has promised us. Psalms 34. Quickly go to Psalms 34. Verse 18. Psalms 34, verse 18. What, what, what does he promise us? Psalms 34, verse 18. The Lord is near to the broken heart. Ah. Ah, read that again, read that again, read that again. The Lord is near to the broken heart. So can you see how the enemy is very cunning? When you are stuck in that situation, you think that God has left me. Why am I encountering all this pain? Listen to the word of God. The word of God never lies. The word of God is saying God is near. <laughs> Oh, so he is not uh, spectating from the terraces there. No, 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 no. He is not spectating with the binoculars from afar. Ah, the word of God is saying he is there. <laughs> experiencing what you're experiencing. Oh, hallelujah. His arm is actually around you. You may not feel it. Ah, you may not believe it. But the word of God never lies. He is in me. <laughs> uh, you might be crying because you've got pain in your body. You might be crying because you've lost your spouse. And you're feeling isolated and you're feeling down. Ah, uh, Listen to the word of God this morning. The Lord is near. <laughs> so he's there with you in your car. He's there with you in your house. Even though you might feel isolated, you might feel lonely, I want you to know that he is there with you. Mm, he is there with you. In the book of Mark chapter 4, 
we hear Jesus telling his disciples, gentlemen, let us cross over to the other side. And the Bible lets us know that when they were when they were sailing and when they were sailing, Jesus said to his disciples, I'm gonna just go and have a nap, a little, a, a little power nap, hallelujah. And if Jesus was having a power nap underneath the border, the Bible lets us know that a strong, violent with listen. The enemy does not care that you've got Jesus in your boat. Hallelujah. Strong winds will still come. Bad stuff, bad experiences will still come. But be rest assured. He is there with you. And as long as he's there with you, you are going to come out victorious. Hallelujah. You are going to come out victorious. You are going to come out with a testimony. Oh, hallelujah. What did, uh, what did uh, King Nebuchadnezzar say? Hallelujah. He asked his, uh, his, his, uh, his bodyguards, oh, did we not put three men in the fire? Did we not throw Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the fire? His, his bodyguard said, yes, king, we threw three men. King Nebuchadnezzar said, how come I see four people in there? Oh, hallelujah. You might be going through fire. I want you to know the word of God is saying he's near you. Mm -hmm. King Nebuchadnezzar said, I see another one in there. Am I being confused here? I'm seeing someone, and he looks like the son of God. You could be going through a fire situation. I'm here to encourage you that is there with you in the fire. Oh, hallelujah. Never listen to the lies of the enemy. Never listen to the, uh, to the lies of the enemy that says God has forsaken you. God has left you. I want you to know that out of the eater, something sweet is going to come out. Something beautiful is going to come out. Hallelujah. What does the word of God say in Isaiah 43, verse 2? It says, when you pass through deep waters, I will be there with you. When you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep you over. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. Why? Because the Lord will be there with you. Oh, glory be to God. Psalms 34 verse 19. What does it say? Many are the afflictions of the right. Not only a few. <laughs> uh, don't you love the word of God? <laughs> Hallelujah. I would have loved you to say only few, but uh, many. So if we're thinking that uh, that experience that you've gone through, it has ended there. Uh, good news for you. Breaking news. <laughs> there are many more that are coming. But here is the encouraging thing. You are not going to go through them on your own. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. It says, many are the afflictions of the righteous. But what? The Lord. Woo! The Lord. The Lord delivers him through them all. Oh, glory be to God. Oh, glory be to God. So, child of God, that situation that is meant to harm you, that situation that has been designed to destroy your children. We are hearing my uh, mama, mama, mama take it uh, testifying about, uh, about, 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 about her children. Hallelujah. I want you to know that even it, it, it's designed to cause harm. Oh, God can still bring something good out of it. Hallelujah. What did Joseph say in the book of? Genesis 50, verse 20. He said, you meant it for evil. You meant it for evil. But God has turned it round for good. Hallelujah. Something can be cooked up. Something negative, something bad, something to discourage, something to harm you. But I want you to know that God is busy cooking up something sweet. 
out of that bad situation, something beautiful out of that negative situation. Oh, glory be to God. So our prayer should be God. Show us a bigger picture so that we understand that this experience that we are going through is not there to destroy us. It's not there to punish us. It's not there to harm us. Hallelujah. But it is there to make us better. Help us to see the bigger picture. Help us to understand the bigger picture of every situation, every encounter that we go through. Glory be to God. So how should we respond when we are encountering these lives? Let's go to the book of James. I hope you're getting something this morning. I hope you're writing down some notes. Let's go to the book of James chapter 1. How then should we respond when we en encounter these lions that unexpectedly jump in our journey. James chapter one, let's read from two to four. Hallelujah. James, James chapter one, verse two. <clears throat> Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters. Whenever you encounter trials of many <laughs> kinds. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Because you consider it joy. Mm. What, what, what's the meaning of joy? <laughs> He's, he's saying, be cheerful. He's saying, be, be glad. I, I don't know where, which planet Mr. James lives in. <laughs> how, can I, how can I find joy in a painful situation? <laughs> how, 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 how can I be cheerful in something uh, that is disheartening? <laughs> ah, glory be to God. So the, the emphasis here is our attitude. Mm. Let me say that again. So the emphasis here is when we are encountering these trials, when we are encountering these trying uh, situations when we are encountering these uh, lions, our attitude, how we respond to them, determines the outcome. <laughs> he say when you encounter these challenging times, when you encounter these problems, when you encounter these circumstances, when you encounter these difficult situations, eh, you have to respond with gladness. You have to respond with joy. Ah, hallelujah. Confuse the enemy. The enemy is, is looking at you and he's thinking that you're going to you know, go into that sunk mode. And all of a sudden, he sees you rejoicing. He sees you celebrating. He sees you praising God. And yet you're holding a doctor's letter saying you've got cancer. Mmm. 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 This is why the disciples were confused when Jesus was saying, when your enemy slaps you, give him the other cheek. And the, 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 ha, which planet is this one coming from? Because as human beings, we are, we are, we are, we are designed, you know, when someone does something bad to you, uh, you, are, you are supposed to, to retaliate. You're supposed to revenge. You're supposed to, 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 you know, to go bitter. Ah. 
And here, James is teaching us that when you encounter this challenging time, your attitude matters. Your attitude should be an attitude of gladness. Ah, it should be an attitude of joy. It should be an attitude of celebrating. Why? Because you are understanding a, 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 a bigger picture that this is not designed to harm me, but this, is, this has been designed to make me better. I'll read it again from two, please. <clears throat> James 1, verse 2. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you encounter trials of many kinds. Three, because you know that the testing of your faith produces endurance. Four, let perseverance finish its work. The testing of your faith. Ah. The testing of your faith is going to produce something. Can you see that? The key word there is produce. <laughs> so the lion is going to produce. <laughs> the lion is designed to produce something. Oh, glory be to God. The lion is going to produce something sweet. And the, the, what is going to produce here is something that is called endurance. Mm. It's something that is called perseverance. It's something that is called patience, which is now lacking in the body, modern day body of Christ. Lacking in the body of Christ. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. I'm a sports person. I like I like sports. There's a guy that I like who is called Mo Farah. Hallelujah. Mo Farah runs uh, what we call long, uh, long distance uh, athletics. Hallelujah. And for uh, the for him to be able to run those long distances, Hallelujah. It is, it, he has to develop something called physical endurance. Hmm. Mm. Listen, they can run for two hours non-stop at the same pace. Why? Because they, they have developed something called physical endurance. Hallelujah. And they get that physical endurance through exercising every day. Hallelujah. And here the word of God is saying to us, these trying times are there to, to, to produce endurance. He's not talking about physical endurance here, ladies and gentlemen. He is talking about spiritual endurance, uh, spiritual stamina. Hallelujah. And this type of spiritual stamina can only be produced through experiencing difficult times. Unfortunately, let me say that again. This spiritual stamina is not going to come because you read the word of God. This spiritual stamina is not going to come because you, 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 you know how to pray it faster. This spiritual stamina is not going to come because you are very good at witnessing. No, 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 no. This spiritual stamina, this type of endurance can only be attained through going through the fire. <laughs> uh, hallelujah. <laughs> oh, glory be to God. Only this type of stamina can only be produced through succeeding in these trying times. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hence why James is encouraging us to rejoice. Because he knows that these trying times are not there to break us. No, 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 no. They are not there to, to, to break you, but they are there to build you. What, what did it say? He says the testing of your, go again, that the testing of your faith mm -hmm. produces endurance. Ah, 
The testing of your faith produces what? Endurance. Uh -huh. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature hey. and complete, hey. not lacking anything. Hey. <laughs> so maturity, spiritual maturity is not going to come because you are the highest giver in the church. No, 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 no. <laughs> It's going to be determined by how well you are handling this difficult situation. How well you are, you are uh, what is your attitude in this fire that you are in? How are you responding to this fire that you're experiencing with your children? How are you responding to this fire that you're experiencing with your spouse? How are you responding to this fire that you're experiencing with your boss at work? How are you responding with this fire that the ministry is encountering? Hallelujah. Only then can you qualify to go into maturity. Not only that, but he mentioned the key word there. He said, so that you become complete. <laughs> Hallelujah. So that you become complete. How many want to become complete? Lacking nothing. Oh, hallelujah. Whatever the enemy throws. A good example is Job. <laughs> ah, Job had managed to attain that level of completeness. Imagine he's relaxed in his office. All of a sudden, there's a knock on the door. Oh, say, your business has just been repossessed. Ah, before he even puts on his jacket to go out, ah, your son has just been arrested. Before he even uh, take the car keys, eh, your wife is. How do you respond to that? What is your attitude? Towards all this that you are going through. It's not designed to break you. It's designed to bring you to maturity. Hallelujah. Is designed to bring you into maturity. Glory be to God. So that you lack nothing. Quickly go to Hebrews 12. Hebrews 12. Hebrews 12. Verse 12. Verse 2, please. God wants you to attain spiritual stamina, spiritual strength, maturity and endurance. Let's read Hebrews 12, verse 2, please. Hebrews 12, 2. Listen to this. Because of the joy awaiting him, he endured the cross, disregarding its shame. Disregarding its shame. Ooh, hallelujah. Listen, the Bible says Jesus was not superhuman. In fact, the book of John chapter 1 says, In the beginning was the word, and the word was God. And the word was God, and the word became flesh. So he was God in flesh, meaning that he could feel what you are feeling. He, he had same emotions, he had same everything because he was 100% flesh. Hallelujah. And the word of God is saying the reason why he managed to endure the cross, the reason why he managed to to uh, 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 take that shame, to accept that shame, is because of what? The joy that was awaiting him. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. In other words, he, 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 he had a bigger picture. Mm. It was the bigger picture that helped him to enjoy the cross. I don't know if it's making sense. It was the understanding of the bigger picture that made him to enjoy the shame. People slapping him, people spitting at him, people kicking him, people uh, uh, whipping him. He enjoyed it because his eyes were fixed on the bigger picture. 
Ay, ay, ay. He knew that this lion that I'm facing right now, something sweet is going to come out of it. Are you getting it? And James is saying here, let perseverance finish its work. <laughs> In other words, don't stop the process. <laughs> don't jump the boat. <laughs> we are quick to run away from the fire, isn't it? Tell your neighbor, don't run away from the fire. We may be going through challenges, but James is saying, let perseverance finish its course. In other words, don't interrupt the process. <laughs> don't stop the process. Hallelujah. Don't run away from that situation. Let it finish its course because it is working out something in you. Honey is going to come out of it. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Let the process finish its progress. Let it be fully developed. Oh, glory be to God. It's just like a, like a, like a, 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 a chicken. Hallelujah. It has, to, it has to go through the process of incubation. Hallelujah. Then it goes through the process of hatching. Then it goes through the process of feeding. Then it goes through the process of now starting to walk on its own and start to feed itself. But it is a process. Some of you are jumping sheep who are still in incubation. Some of you are jumping sheep when you've just started hatching. <laughs> Hallelujah. Why? Because maybe it is, it, is, it is too painful. Maybe it's because that experience is, is, is too difficult. James is saying, let perseverance finish its course. So trials, or let me call them lions. So these lions are going to produce perseverance or endurance, which is going to mold our character and our attitude, which is going to produce maturity and growth in us. And then we become complete. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, glory be to God. Oh, glory be to God. Tell your neighbor, out of the eater. I don't hear you. I don't hear you. Tell your neighbor, out of the eater. Out of the eater. eater. God is designing something sweet. He's God is designing something sweet. Sweet. So don't run away from the process. Don't run away. Don't run away, don't run away from the process. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's go back to go back to judges. Go back to judges. Go back to judges. Because the end goal here, as James has told us, the end goal is maturity, isn't it? The end goal is maturity. Look at what maturity does. We go to verse 10, Mary. <clears throat> Judges 14, verse 10. Mm -hmm. So his father went down to the woman, and Samson gave a feast there. Mm -hmm. For young men used to do no, so. No, um, for verse 8. For verse 8. Verse mm -hmm. 8. After some time, when he returned to get here, he turned aside to see the carcass of the lion. And behold, a swarm of bees and honey were in the carcass of the lion. He took some 
some of it in his hands and went along eating. When he came to his father and mother, he gave some to them and they also ate. Hallelujah. But he did not tell them. He that did not tell them taken. where it came from. We say the key word here is maturity. 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 I want you, if you're writing down in your notes, write down. The honey is not for you alone. <laughs> Hallelujah. Write down the honey is not for you alone. Mm. So can you see how that which was meant to kill him, that which was meant to harm him, that which appeared to want to cause distress in him, became a life-giving source. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. That which is meant to kill you is going to become a life-giving source, child of God. Mm. And here the key word is now maturity. He took honey and he ate, but he did not keep it for himself. He went and he gave to others. In other words, the honey that you're going to get from that experience, oh, hallelujah, the strength that you're going to get from that experience is not for you alone to keep. It's for you to go and encourage others. It's for you to go and share with others. Tell your neighbor, the honey is not for you. The honey is not for you, but it is meant to be shared by others. Oh, hallelujah. So he took that honey, he took that sweetness, and he went and he gave it. Hmm. So the pain that you are going through, child of God, <laughs> uh, the pain that you are going through today is going to strengthen someone tomorrow. The experience you are going through today is going to help someone tomorrow. Your job loss, your experience in that job loss, your experience with uh, the, 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 your child being arrested, your experience with the death of your loved one, that adversity that you are going through now is going to help someone tomorrow. Hmm. How many can agree with me that you can minister more effectively to someone when you've gone through that same experience? <laughs> the bishops can agree with me that those that are more effective in prison fellowship are those that have been criminals before. <laughs> those that are more effective in prison fellowship are those that have been prisoners themselves. Why? Because they've, 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 they've managed to attain a honey from that lion. Oh, hallelujah. And because now they are fully mature, they know that that honey is not for themselves, but that honey is there to be shared. He took honey. And he gave it to others. Oh, hallelujah. Who can better help someone who is going through illness than someone who has gone through that same illness? Hmm. Who can better comfort a widow than a widow who has gone through that experience? Who can better help someone who has lost a job than someone who has lost a job and attained honey out of it? Many times we are entering into situations and circumstances that we are not qualified even to open our mouth. Hmm. How do you go and comfort a young couple 
who have just had a lavish wedding, wedding of the century. They've gone on their honeymoon and the spouse dies in the, at the honeymoon. <laughs> they went together to the honeymoon. The spouse is coming back with the coffin. How do you go and, 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 and comfort that person? Unless you have gone through that same experience yourself. <laughs> Some of us, you know, when we are going to these funerals, we are better off just going and just keeping quiet. I'm telling you. Because instead of making the situation better, we make the situation worse. Why? Because we've not gone through that process. Ah, James said, let perseverance finish its course so that you become complete. We are entering into situations when we are incomplete. So instead of being a blessing, we are becoming a pain. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. I want you to know that God is going to see you, you through that fire. God is going to see you through that difficult period. Hallelujah. And you're going to come out of it as pure as God. Oh, but that experience that you have gone through, hallelujah, is going to benefit others. It's going to help someone, hallelujah. Out of that eater is going to come out some honey. And I want you to know, that honey is not for you alone. That honey needs to be shared. Hallelujah. Someone is saying, Elder, give us proof. Let's go to 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians 1. Quickly, 2 Corinthians 1. You're almost finished. <clears throat> Elder, what? What do you mean this painful situation has to help someone? Second Corinthians 1. 2 Corinthians chapter 1. Read verse 4. Open your Bible. Open your Bible so that you, you, you don't think elders is making things up. Read verse 4, please. Ye comfort us in all our troubles so that we can comfort others. Aye, 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 aye. Is that in your Bible? <laughs> So he is comforting you, not, not just so that you wipe your, the, the tears off your face. He's not comforting you so that you just feel better. He is not giving you the honey so that you just eat the honey yourself. Why is he doing that? Uh -huh. So that we can comfort others. Is it in your Bible, brother? So can you see how that experience, how God is going to give you a honey from that experience is not that you just enjoy it. Hallelujah. The word of God is saying, he comforts us through these troubles. He comforts us through these trials so that we are able to comfort others. Go on. Read it from start. Read it from start. He comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort others. Uh -huh. When they are troubled, we will be able to give them the same comfort. Underline the word when they are also troubled. When they are troubled, we will also be able now to go and say, Ah, I've been there. Uh, I've attained some honey from that life. Hallelujah. Don't worry, my sister. Don't worry, my brother. It shall be well. I know you're having problems with your wife. You're having problems with your husband. You're having problems with your children. You're having problems with your ministry. You're having problems with your boss. It shall be well. Why? Because I have gone through it and I've come out as God. That's what the word of God is saying. So that when they are also in that trouble, you will be able to comfort them. Why? Because you have attained gold. You have attained honey. Oh, hallelujah. So our prayer should be, God, help us to 
see the bigger picture of this trial that we are going through. Help us to understand the value of what I am going through. I've got pain in my legs. I've got pain in my body. Help me to understand, to see the, not to concentrate on the immediate pain, but to see beyond the pain. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Let me say that again. Help me, God, not to concentrate on the immediate pain, but to see beyond the pain. Help me not to concentrate on the immediate distress, on the immediate shame, on the immediate discomfort, but to see beyond. May God review a bigger picture of whatever you may be going through. May he reveal a bigger picture in the name of Jesus. May you be able to understand and to attain the value of that which you are going through. Help us, Spirit of God, that our attitude may be that of gladness. <laughs> when we encounter these lions, may our attitude be that of joy. May our attitude be that of rejoicing. As your word says, count it all joy. Oh, hallelujah. Glory be to God. He wants us to see the bigger picture, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, hallelujah. Out of the eater, something to eat is going to come out of it. Out of the strong, something beautiful is going to come out of it. Let us close with 2 Corinthians 4. 2 Corinthians 4, verse 17 and 18. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us. Tell your neighbor, <laughs> uh, these are only, mom see the word momentary there means shortly. Ah, uh, ah. Uh, Momentary means yeah, brief. So the word of God is saying for these, these brief uh, uh, troubling periods, this short-lived temporary period, hallelujah, this momentary period are not going to last forever. The enemy wants you to think it's going to last forever. But look at the word of God. He's saying they are momentary. It means they are short-lived. Mm -hmm. What are they doing? What are these troubles doing? They are achieving what? For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. Ah, she's not the bigger picture. Huh? They are, uh, these trials, they are achieving something that far outweighs the honey far outweighs the pain you're going through. The honey far outweighs the shame that you're experiencing. The honey far outweighs the discouragement you're going through. Mm -hmm. 18. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen. So let us fix our eyes on the bigger picture. Let us not fix our eyes on the discomfort. Let us not fix our eyes on the doctor's letter. Let us not fix our eyes on the discouragement. Let us not fix our eyes on the pain, but let us fix our eyes on the bigger picture. That's why the word of God is encouraging you this morning. For you to attain that honey. Oh, hallelujah. For you to attain that honey, fix your eyes on the bigger picture. Who is the bigger picture? The bigger picture is Jesus. The bigger picture is Jesus. Only him can see you through these problems. 
these challenges, this lion that seemed to want to devour you, I want you to know, child of God, that it will never devour you. Oh, hallelujah. Because out of the eater, something sweet is going to come out of it. So, Father, we thank you this morning. We bless you. We honor you. Thank you for your word. Thank you for encouraging us, oh God. Thank you for reminding us that we are never on our own. You're always there with us. Oh, help us, Spirit of God, to continue reminding us that you are the source of our strength. You are the source of our strength, oh God. We thank you, Spirit of God. We thank you, Father. Your word has encouraged us this morning, oh God, that we don't focus on the, on the immediate situation, on the immediate problems that we go through as individuals, as a family, as a ministry, but we always look at the bigger picture of God. What is it that God wants to achieve through us? Help us and strengthen us, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, Holy Spirit, I pray that you work on our attitude, oh God, as we encounter these trying times. May our attitude be an attitude of joy, may an attitude of gladness, knowing that he who has begun this work in us is faithful enough to see it to completion. We thank you and we honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.